Hey everyone, it's Margaret and welcome back to another episode of Vantour Reactions and Reviews. Today I'll be reviewing a Vantour done by Uphill Adventure. Sarah and Jess have a 2019 170 Sprinter that they converted and I'm so excited to share with you what they've done. They also call their van Lynn Van Well, which I think is one of my favorite van names of all time. A quick note from YouTube statistics, I can see that a lot of people who are watching these videos are not actually subscribed to the channel. So if you can click the corner of this video and subscribe, it would be a really cool way for you to show us support. And it also helps to push this channel, push these videos to more people who could potentially benefit from them, which is the entire goal of this series. And as always, make sure to smash the like button when I say something that you completely agree with. It's giving me a corona-free high five. Now let's get into it. Hey guys. All right, ready? <laughs> Let's start by showing off the front section here. Um, so we have our little pass-through door, which is our way to get up to the cab um, if it's raining or for like safety purposes need be. Um, we do fit through here. It is hilarious to watch because it's not very easy. <laughs> so I won't show you that. So first quick impression, very, pretty van definitely a lot of white everybody thinks it gives that like open white airy feel as many of you know i'm a big fan of like dark themes because i find that it adds like a lot of depth to small spaces but i know i'm in the minority on that so i won't push my dark agenda onto you but dark colors they're just so relaxing and calming it's like the ocean or chocolate or raspberries or fudge or that cake from matilda so now we go on to her partition. I'm glad she made note of the size of that door because the bench is making it so they have to step over to get into the cab. I don't think a lot of people realize how often you are going to and from the cab, both when you are within the main living space and when you are in the cab itself. So especially for the person who's spending time in the passenger seat for couples. If you forgot your phone charger, if you forgot your sunglasses, if you forgot your sweater, you wanna be able to jump into the back, grab those things and bring it up to the front so you have those comforts when you're driving long distances. A side note, as she mentioned for safety, a lot of women will use the partition as a safety feature because when you are able to close that off and someone's coming in the cab, it isolates you from the assailant and it also gives you some extra time to grab a makeshift weapon and develop a little bit of a plan. Unfortunately, not being able to access the cab immediately and quickly surrenders some of your power because essentially the assailant will have full control over the vehicle and that keeps you a little bit cornered unless you want to jump out the side door to get away from whatever is happening in your van and that is essentially surrendering your home for me i've always felt the most comfortable and the most safe when i've been able to access the cab immediately to then drive away and in the cab you have a lot of tools to get some attention you have the horn you have high beams you can rev up your engine it's pros and cons everybody needs to make the decision in which they will feel safest and then of course another main reason for having that partition is it gives you that extra insulation from the cab and all of the temperatures that are going on up front. Here we've got our little bench. Um, which is surprisingly spacious. Um, we store our backpacks in here along with some um, like our toolbox, our a little bin with our sweaters in it. Welcome to our kitchen. As you can see, we have plenty of storage space. We have this adorable little sink, which is super small, but also really deep, so we can wash all of our pots and pans. We also have under cabinet lighting, which is super helpful at night when we're prepping our dinner. We are also all electric here. I have an irrational fear of propane, so we have an induction cooktop and a little toaster oven, all runs off electric. I really like that induction stove. 
replacement. That is very clever to have it stored in a drawer, always plugged in so you just open and it's right there. My curiosity always gets the best of me though, like with how much weight some of those can handle, like if you're boiling a lot of potatoes or something quite heavy. With these induction stoves, you definitely need to have a big inverter and huge power storage. And that's if you are just trying to make meals that take 30 minutes. In some of the previous videos where I talked about induction stoves, people talked about how they were very efficient. And you have to look at this from two ways. Efficient in cooking, yeah, they work amazing. There's no debate about that. But efficiency power-wise, not so much. You need to have a lot of power and a lot of battery storage to be able to handle an induction cooker. Not everybody can have an induction cooker in their home. And some people, when they don't understand how big of a drain that will be on their system, they end up having to buy more solar panels or buy more batteries in order to supplement that. So you need to kind of know which appliances are a must for you before you even start your build. If you don't understand how much of a drain these induction stoves are doing on your batteries, you're going to ruin your batteries. Another thing that caught my eye about this kitchen is that the cabinets close on magnets. As a magnet fanatic, I say this with a very heavy heart. In this case, magnets just won't cut it. Unless you have really strong magnets or a lot of magnets, a tiny little strip of magnets won't keep your entire door closed. You'll experiment with it though. We all learn along the way. This is my plant balcony. It's definitely the best part of the entire van. I'm sure you agree. Here we have our shoe cubby. We store all of our shoes in here. It's empty right now, but they all fit. That is a huge and beautiful entryway and plant display. Very cute. I like how there is that step with the carpet so they can wipe their feet on the way into the van. I would be using that a lot. One thing about the shoe cubby, when that side door is closed, they can't access that cubby at all. So that's one of the things with these entry unit storage. You want to have access from both inside and outside the van. Usually it's better to have access from inside the van. Here we have our bathroom um, with our Nautilus self-cleaning retractable door. Um, it seems to be what everybody has and we like it. It works well so far. Um, inside of our bathroom, we have the Nature's Head composting toilet and we have a shower in there, um, which we're excited about. We haven't used it yet, so we'll let you know how that goes. Tip top bathroom, really love that wet room. So a wet room is when you have both a shower and a toilet in the same space. If you haven't seen my toilet talk, my deep dive episode, make sure to click the link and then we go through all of the types of toilets that you can pick in a van and a couple of different design ideas for if you want a fixed bathroom, convertible space, etc. So have the max air fan here um, because we don't have any heating or cooling. Um, yeah, so. We're, we're pretty reliant on this guy and it's been great so far. So a lot of people, like we said earlier with the partition, are using that partition as an insulation. What they have now done is they've installed windows on each side of their van where panels would normally be. This is a big insulation sacrifice, especially when you don't have any heating or any cooling methods within a van that you are living in full time. This is our drop down table. Pretty nifty design by our builders. We like it a lot. So we have this little bench over the wheel well that one person can sit at. And we also have a folding chair that can go on the other side. Okay, that explains why the seat is so small as they just made that initially to cover the wheel well. And now maybe they can't extend it because I see a little drawer just there. That kind of bumps me out because if it were a little bit wider and you threw a pillow behind you, you'd have like this entire lounge space to work. The table does not really look sturdy at all. And of course she doesn't look super comfortable. I just see myself knocking that table over a lot, like with a backpack or coming out of the bathroom or something. If you've seen any other van tour videos, you know that a lot of people put storage on both sides of their walls. So you usually have like a corridor down the middle and then you have shelving, shelving on both sides. We really wanted to have more of an open concept because we like sitting on the floor and stretching and we just wanted the van to feel spacious. 
Okay, we need to take a moment and talk all about weight management and weight distribution. On the driver's side of their van, they have the kitchen, the bathroom, and the majority of their storage. Give me one quick second because I want to speed through and check where their electrical and water tanks are. Okay, so they have water tank on the opposite side and then the electrical is like middle and also to the same side as the driver's seat. I don't wanna call directly this van dangerous because I don't know what materials they're using. I also don't know what the distribution is like on their axles, so it's hard for me to jump there but I can say that it does not look like the weight is distributed evenly at all. This information is important for you as you are designing your van or keeping in mind how to put your layout. If you are unevenly weighted, you'll feel that when driving, you'll feel it when it's windy, you'll feel it when it's going fast that you're kind of like fighting it like a sailboat. And it also in some places might not even pass like technical inspection or even like insurance protocol. So it might not even be legal road wise. A lot of people will distribute their weight with like the kitchen on one side and bathroom on the other or electrical on one side and water on the other. But another thing you need to keep in mind is weight distribution is the most important when you are driving and you don't always want to be driving with a full tank of water. Lottie and I, we are very strategic in like most of our decision making. And whenever we are going somewhere, we have a longer commute, we don't want to be lugging around all of that extra water weight. Instead, we wanna drive pretty light, and then when we get closer to our destination is when we fill up our water, camp with it, use it up, and then the cycle continues. We leave when we are low on water. When you have a full tank and you're driving around with that, it's just higher consumption, it's unnecessary effort for your engine, it's just nice to keep your van as lightweight as possible when you're moving. For laundry, we have this little bin over the wheel well. We just added a couple of hooks and fit this little bag in here perfectly so we can just toss our laundry right inside. Guys, this is our bed. The most important thing about the bed is that we can sit up all the way straight. We even have some headroom. When we were designing it, that was super important to us. We also have this little space under the bed here, which is going to be for our puppy that we get hopefully really soon. We have two windows on either side of the bed each of them has a sliding opening so we can get a nice breeze in the morning. Completely agree. Headspace on top of the van is such a luxury, especially as they said, they don't carry too much stuff under in their garage. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you are planning on spending a lot of time in your bed and you have windows such as they do, when you are sitting up in bed to work like with a laptop or to FaceTime or something or other, you'll be leaning against some of those windows. That's why a lot of people will opt to do just windows on one side of their bed so that they have a space to be able to stack the pillows and make themselves comfortable without having that anxiety of cracking one. We have lights. Those are the right ones, yeah. <laughs> Everything on a little control panel right next to our bed, as well as an outlet and a little control for our heated floors. Heated floors. Yeah! Awesome idea, love that idea, might steal that idea, brilliant. One thing to also note about their van that has them at an advantage is because they're both shorter women, they are able to sleep widthwise in a sprinter. Not everybody has that privilege. For a lot of people who are like, I would say five, six, five, seven and up, inside of a sprinter van, you either have to have those pockets that are like extended onto the body, or you have to shift your bed and sleep lengthwise. So that's one of the trade-offs when you are picking out which van, which will be another topic for another deep dive. All right, so let's get in here now. As you see, we've got all of this storage back here. We've got more storage underneath of here. Our freshwater and our gray water gauges. We've got our freshwater fill right here and our outdoor shower hookup. Under the van, we've got our gray water tank. It's 15 gallons. We're up on the roof where we've got six 100 watt solar panels. Um, we've got our max air fan that sticks through there. Um, and we've got our Wii Boost. Thank you guys so much for watching our van tour. We hope that you've enjoyed it very cool van so i think the biggest takeaway from tours like this is looking at your weight distribution and definitely taking time to examine your appliances and understand what appliances will be taking up 
how much of your power. Thanks so much for watching. I'm always very excited for Wednesdays to be able to share this type of content with you and hopefully help more people who are interested in this community. As many of you know, this is never anything against the van lifer. Van lifers are my favorite lifers. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to the channel, drop a comment below, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you next Wednesday in another video. Have a great week.